This is Alan Jeremy from Bifix Incorporated and welcome to yet another Blender tutorial. Hello YouTube. So first of all, I would like to apologize for the delay in the making of this tutorial. And this is going to be part two of the um, crown modeling tutorial that I had made earlier. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to add the materials for the crown. So first of all, if you're not already in Cycles Render, you should change to Cycles Render, then add a subsurf modifier to the crown and set the level to 2. Then the next thing you want to do is apply all the modifiers that you added to the crown during the modeling process. So I'll just apply those. So here's how the materials are going to work. First of all, the crown itself is going to have a gold material. And for the gold material, you go to the materials panel, add a new material, name it gold. I had already made this, so I'll just explain what each and every thing, every single thing here does. So first of all, you need it to be a glossy material, and this is because it's reflective. In other words, it's glossy, it reflects whatever is around it, and in this case, uh, for our gold material, we're going to put a kind of pale yellow color for our gold and we're going to set the roughness to 0.1 and the roughness basically is just the level of hardness i would say of the material for example the higher the roughness then it means the um it means that the glossy effect is not going to be a hundred percent in other words it's not going to be a hundred percent glossy and it's going to have a little bit less reflectivity and this is good because nothing in this world is hundred percent of anything in other words you can't have anything that is completely pure so you have to add this roughness so that you can have that realistic effect so the next thing we want to do is add the materials for our gems. So you should add about five materials here, like the gem for the different colors of the gems. I added blue, red, colorless, yellow, purple. Yes, so that's all I added. So now for this, you want it to be a glass material and the glass material means that you can see through the material and therefore it is actually what we want because gems are somehow precious. They're, they're, what? Okay, gems are kind of glassy, I guess if that's an English word. They're more of glass and you can see through them. So just make this, a, for each gem, you make a glass material and give it the appropriate color. So to apply to, <coughs> to give the different gems materials, after you have set the default materials, as you could, you could see here, my five materials after you have done that then you can change the roughness here make sure the roughness is not zero because as i said before nothing is pure and the ior is basically the internal angle of refraction and you can just play around with this and get whatever material you want so now for each gem 
to apply one of the materials that we had created initially you click on this material mini button I think then select the material for the gem so in this case I just randomly selected different materials for the different gems and this gives us a nice random effect so now the next thing we need to take care of is our lighting and I just used a simple lighting setup and used an area lamp but I would advise you to use a sun lamp since it is more realistic so press shift A to add a new lamp then add a sun lamp then add a sun lamp and move it up then rotate it slightly move it behind the camera and rotate it slightly like so so that it's going to appear as if the light is coming from the direction the camera is from behind the camera and in the meantime that's the kind of lighting we're going to use it's a very simple setup so it shouldn't be a problem so now if you want to see how it looks when rendered you can instead of rendering the whole actual image which may take some time you can look at the rough rendered material and you can see this is kind of looking good yeah so with that said and done now I'm going to show you how to render it okay so for the render settings you go to this camera here and where it says render then change this resolution from 50 to 100 so that you have uh, your images 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels and not the 50% which was there initially which is I guess around 540 pixels by half of this so I'll close this down then another thing I'm also going to show you which I did not do is adding a stamp uh, a stamp is basically something that you can add to show that this work was created by you and you enable this stamp by checking this checkbox here then the font size is the size of the text that is going to be used to display your stamp uh, this options here show what else is shown beside the stamp and if you want the time to be shown then you check this if you want the date to be shown you check this if you do not want them to be shown on the other hand you can uncheck both of this and any of this and so forth so to write whatever you want to write for your stamp you check this note here then write whatever you want let's say I write created by Aaron Jeremy then I do not want any of this to be shown so yes now you can close this down now the next thing you want to do is change the output folder and this is basically where your rendered image is going to be to be saved if you try to save it so I'll change this to let's say my desktop then I add a new directory and let me rename it to tutorial then open it up Oops, sorry and maybe open it up tutorial click accept ok 
Okay, so leave everything as it is. Uh, for this file format, I would suggest that you use PNG because PNG conserves all the conserves all the quality of the image and it accepts transparency unlike other formats such as JP, JPEG. Yeah, so the next thing you also want to do is change this from RGB to RGBA and this just means it's going to be the red, green, blue plus the alpha meaning that you can see the transparency. I think that's how it works, I'm not quite sure. Okay, now with that said and done, we need to check the number of samples that we need for our render, and in this case, I use 500. And the higher the samples, basically, the less the noise, and noise is for those who don't know, noise is this weird looking pixelated effect you can see over here. And we do not want that. We want our image to be clear. So the higher the number of samples, as you can see, as the samples increase, the noise reduces. And the, if the noise reduces, then we have a clearer image and better quality. Okay, so with that said and done, uh, if you want to increase the number of samples, you can increase to whatever number you want. I'll use 500, but remember that the more, the higher the number of samples, then the higher the render time, and that means that it will take longer for your image to render. In this case, I'm using CPU and not GPU, and therefore mine will take slightly longer to render. So. I'll use this, I'll use about 200 for now, or 100, just to show you how it works. Then close this down, leave it the rest as it is, and position your camera appropriately. As you can see, I have positioned mine, and if you look here, you can see that I have the view that I desire. So now that I already know how it will look if it's when it's rendered, I can render the image. And you do this by pressing F12. And it will slowly start rendering. So in the meantime, I will just pause and unpause when I have done the rendering. Okay, this is taking quite a while, but as you can see, it's looking quite decent so far and for now I'll just end this tutorial here because I do not want to waste any more of your time and that's how you simply just render this image that's how you simply just render the crown and also assign the different materials to it so remember the gold is glossy but don't forget to add the hardness and the gloss I mean the roughness and the gloss is the gems are glass materials so don't forget to add the roughness either when you're making them because nothing is 100% pure so thanks for watching and see you next time